All right, recording has been split for now. We begin section 30, a Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, soundtrack fits the disaster. A no battle node for the start. Let's get this party started here. No further ado, let's go. I need to see how the hell I missed it out of character, but in character I came to realize. The Isle of Britain was collapsing. All the buildings the fairies had built in imitation of human civilization. All the corpses from those heaped up against, up in ages past to those freshly killed by the calamities. The insects sucked more of them into the air with every passing second, and swallowed them whole. The northern lands dissipated like snow, the southern ant lands drifted away like ash. Those few who somehow managed to survive all joined hands and fell into the void. It was as though everything in Fairy Britain had been no more than a single night's dream. I don't have that bad of memory. To be fair, in character, we've been going through this for like 40 days straight without any breaks, rhyme, or reason. But out of character, you know, I'm, I've am i had had many a breaks. I still can't identify that unknown servant spirit origin pattern. It doesn't match any of the seven main classes or even any of the extra ones. I've never seen anything like this class before. What is this thing, Holmes? I can only confirm that this class is unknown. There are those who serve as inspiration to others, and usher in new ages by doing good deeds, heroes. And there is those who help good things come about by serving as their necessary obstacles, anti-heroes, the counter-heroes, the counter to heroes. Among those, among these there are doubtless some anti-heroes who accomplish great feats through treachery. An imposter, no, someone who has achieved greater power and feats than even one who is genuine by deceiving others about the nature of their very soul. Such an anti-hero would not be an avenger or a ruler, no, would they be, nor would they be an entity from an outer zone, or a distinct, separate personality within a person. No, they would be a pretender, a heroic spirit mired in falsehoods, who fights the entire world rather than people or beasts. And yet I can think of no better name for Oberon. C come the hell on. What in the world's going on here? No, I am not a pretender. The boy won. Kyrolite came through with flying colors. I know it may not be possible for our world to coexist with this lost spell, but we never wanted to destroy it. We saved Burton, damn it. So why is this happening? Answer me, Holmes. What in the world is that monster? I suspect it's the comptiness, concept of emptiness. It may seem like a living creature, but it has no muscles, no bones, and no, no organs. What appears to be its mouth is in actuality a hole. Though it appears to be sucking up the ground, in truth the ground is falling up, toward it. Imagine a bathtub filled with water. Now imagine that our world is that water and that creature is the drain. What happens to the water in the bath once the plug is removed from the drain? Well, it's water, right? So I just make a little whirlpool and swirl down the drain. Wait, you're saying that thing is sucking everything up, but... Indeed, we, or rather the very space you inhabit, is falling towards it. Even if we were to escape our present location, it would achieve nothing. Now that the plug has been removed, everything on the planet is going to fall into that hole. The very epitome of a pitfall. I simply never imagined that there could be a hole the entire world could fall into. I want some motivations here, Oberon. Vortigern, the cowardly king who killed Uther, King Arthur's father. Then you must be King Arthur's arch enemy for this lost belt. No, I couldn't care less about King Arthur. Think bigger, Mash. I'm humanity, Dark Enemy. Vortigern was Britain's destiny incarnate in your world, too, right? Well, I'm not about to allow humanity to have their own age, not on my watch. If humans are just going to trample all over Britain's mystics, then I'd rather end it before the age of mystics came to a close. I'd like to go out on a high note, in essence, even if it means killing myself. And yeah, you don't have a say in it. Believe me, I get it. There is nothing worse than when the thing you hate becomes super popular. Not that it matters when King Arthur comes along to stop you in your treks. That's the problem with your world. Neither the good nor the evil ones in it are willing to go far enough. Want to destroy humanity? You need to destroy the world itself. Your Vortigern failed because he couldn't cross that line. He is not smiling. Yes, I am noticing. Why? Yes, why do you want to? They disgust me. What of it? 
Wouldn't a bunch of vermin skidding around the corners of your room disgust you too? Disgusting? You think this Britain is disgusting? That the fairies and the humans who live in the land of the Fae are all disgusting? Hm? You mean you actually like them, Ash? Wow, that's really something. Mm, don't take it too personally. It's not just this, place, just this place that disgusts me. It's everything. To me, even your world looks just like a giant pile of shit. Probably. Hmm, that was vulgar, wasn't it? Not how the Fairy King should speak, is it? Sorry, I'll be more careful in the future. Think you can get forgive me just this once, especially after all we've been through together. In fact, tell you what, I apologize for everything I just said. If you'd rather we could just forget this whole thing happened. Hmm? Okay, wait, huh? I don't understand, Master. It seemed like Oberon was being completely sincere just now. Stop. No, I have not done my Oberon. Oberon! Pools. And now I'm... Now I am in the questioning phases. How much of what our interactions was truth and how much of it was false? Why, whatever you do mean. I mean, you're over on the liar, apparently. So you do get it. I'm so glad to hear that, soul. You're right, I'm a liar. I never told you guys the truth. Not once. But I was still deadly serious about destroying Britain. And I relied on you most to make that happen. I mean, think about it. If someone told you to do something as easy as destroy Britain, where would you even begin? I was as clueless as the next person. I didn't know what I was going to do. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that even if I could defeat Morgan, it wouldn't be enough. I would need so, so many pieces to fall into place to bring down Fairy Britain. Morgan and Caldea alone weren't just going to cut it. Everything had to happen at the right time, and I'd only get a single chance. Even I had no choice but to watch my every step carefully. But then, I... Gosh darn it! I am literally in the middle of streaming. I will be up there shortly. To grab my food. <laughs> of course that would happen. Okay. I know that they called because my food is literally here. So I'm going to go and grab my food real quick. Yes. <laughs> yes. Indeed that timing. I will be literally right back, everybody. Yes, yes, perfect timing and all that. All right, I'm back. I got my pizza next to me so I can consume nourishment while, you know, dealing with Oberon's betrayal. But, the instant, but then I saw you on that beach and I instantly realized, this guy's a total moron, the perfect performer. I just know he's going to make all of my dreams come true. I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that you were the worst, the best, and best spectator I could hope for. One that I knew would bring everything to a spectacular end. So which is it? Performer or spectator? Fine, I take it back. You're a nitpicky critic. Happy now? Anyway, my intuition was right. You lived up to my expectations and then some. So much so that I wouldn't have minded letting you live. Except I have to destroy Caldea, too. Vortigern's goal is to ensure this false Britain finally disappears, since it's hung around for far too long after, a de after his death. So we didn't live up to his expectations. He would have minded letting us die. He does not have to. He does not have to restore Caldea, as well. Me, my goal is to wipe out humanity. So that's not his goal. And Caldea's whole deal is protecting proper human history, right? Kind of makes us best friends! So I'm going to keep you all alive somewhere else so you can maintain the status quo to yourself later on. I'm Okay, I'm going to stop trying to go opposite, but 
kill you all here so you can't change things up on me later. Good luck, Oberon. Oh, well, that's gonna... That's gonna make things difficult if the worm is coming at us. What the hell, I can't put any distance between us and that, no matter how hard I push it. Captain Da Vinci, Holmes, hell, I'll even take Chubby. Hurry up and get Soul and Mash back inside. Oh crap, we're not gonna make it. Klaus is coming straight for us. We can't get away, it's gonna swallow us whole. Damn it, all of our sensors have stopped working too. I can't tell what's going on outside anymore. Oh, it's so dark in here, I can't even tell what's going on inside either. There's no light or sound. What do we do, Captain? What can we possibly do against? Lock the next gravity. Point the bow start straight up and set the engines to the second stage. If that thing's trying to make us fall in, we'll just have to rise away from it. Even if we're in total darkness, even if we're inside an endless hollow, I'm not giving up until our engines do. All hands maintain battle stations. The creature causing this collapse may still be out there, but so are Soul and Mash. And knowing those two, they'll find a way out of this. That's the first arrow done. Take a slice of pizza. We are literally in the abyss. Slice of pizza and take a bite. Still no battles. When I was born, I couldn't even breathe. No much so much as a single toe was truly alive. I was a rotten mass of fluid inside a chrysalis. Under the circumstances, the truth behind Oberon's creation. Can you imagine how I felt when I woke up to this morning the morning sun's rays? I was in the autumn woods at the outskirts of fairy Britain. The autumn woods full of fairies who had been bullied, persecuted, and had nowhere else to go. The only thing to do there was die. It was them out there amongst those who didn't even belong anywhere else. Among those who were hated and forgotten, and now had nothing left to do but die. Then my chrysalis suddenly appeared. My chrysalis looked just like a fairy, but it wasn't. It was a device Britain itself created to bring about its own end. I can't believe this timeline is still hanging on more than 10,000 years after it died. It's sick. I hate everything that lives in this damn island. I just want to erase it all from existence. Alright, Infinity, thanks for stopping by, man. It was nice chatting with you for a bit. Get some rest. That's all I am, a single insect born from this island's own execratory hatred of living creatures. Ah. But of course, as an insect born of excrement, my birth was a wretched affair. My crystals appeared as both pitiful and beautiful, so the fairies must have thought I was their king. They gathered around it and watched over my chrysalis until I stood up on itself. Bye, Infinity. Oh, gosh, that was disgusting. Now that it was standing up, it was a chrysalis no longer. It was the perfect fairy tale king, the very sort of those of the forest had long awaited. For it looked just like the fairy king depicted by a famous, talented, somewhat mean spirited author. For the king of the moors, now this. So I'm a ghost liner, a servant now. I guess as long as they're born from people's desires, it doesn't matter whether they're a servant's original or what is real or fake. It turned out the fairy named Oberon had existed both in proper human history and fairy Britain. But this Oberon pretending to be a king was a creature composed of entirely of lies. Everything he said was untrue thanks to the underlying premise that it was all just part of a single night's reverie. Oh, this is amazing. Everything I say or do ultimately becomes twisted. I love you became I don't love you. I don't love you becoming I don't even care about you. That was just who Oberon was. And given his nature as a heroic spirit, there was nothing he could do about it. No, oh, well, that's fine. I was already planning to lying through my teeth all this time, anyway. 
That aside, this is all because Britain gets flots of glowing in from the outside. Someone who's supposed to hate property ministry so much, Morgan really seems to have a paradoxically un unhealthy love for it. And so the fairy king was born. As luck would have it, this was the right this was the right when the child of prophecy poem was becoming the hottest topic in fairy society. The king already knew about a great deal about proper human history, but this time made sure to do his homework extra thoroughly. He knew the story of King Arthur, whom Morgan was wary of. Yeah, I did get that. He can't help but lie. So he decided he'd make use of the fairy of paradise, the Avalon the Fae, who had appeared somewhere in Britain. Uh, take another bite. Same line. I'm not going to read the same line over. Mmm. Now there's a difference. All I could see was wriggling insects like a sea of living rubbish. Oberon was born from Britain's death throes. Oberon didn't love any of the island's creatures. His only thought upon being informed of his duty to destroy Fairy Britain was in accordance with the island's own wishes was. Isn't there anyone else who could do it? No, well, now that I've been born, I guess I have no choice. My body still won't move. Every breath I take feels like it's going to kill me. Just moving my toes makes me feel like I'm going to jump out of my skin. And the worst part is... Just being alive makes me sick. As a chrysalis, Oberon could not close his eyes. And that is why he could not look away from them. Wriggling, wriggling. For over half a year, all Oberon could do was stare as they wriggled away in front of him. Oberon was born from filthy sludge. Even as inside his crystals, he was no more than sludge. Everywhere he looked, everything he saw looked like so much putrid sludge. He was disgusted by the sight of these vagrant weaklings clinging to unfounded hope. So is this how Oberon truly sees things? He was disgusted by these starved wretches now depending on him for help after they had been endlessly tricked and deceived by everyone else. He was disgusted at being treated like a king by these creatures who could only crawl, squirm, and wriggle. And above all, he was disgusted with himself for being at the very bottom of such an awful situation. He felt like a butterfly corpse being stormed by ants. This kind of thing that happens in trash heaps in the deepest dregs of the world. Pure loathing grew in his chest, but not for any one person in particular. He didn't despise the insects swarming him, or even himself for being swarmed. It was everything. It was the structure of the world itself. That is what Oberon decided had to go. Excuse me. But never mind his backstory now. Hang in there, Sol. You're almost at the end. You've still got to turn things around spectacularly at the very last moment, don't you? Merlin! Merlin! No, not Merlin. That's Castoria's star that she sees. You're alive. That's strange. You do know we're in the abyss now, right? Oh, I see. Did you already overcome your lost will? That would explain how you opened your eyes. I think that's just going to make your death much, much more painful, though. But hey, you do you. Where's Mash? Why, she's sleeping right next to you, silly. She may as well not be here, though. She's not waking up. Hey, since you're awake and all, why don't we talk for a bit? You must be pretty tired, right? You have some food. It's one of those ration things. I found it in your ship while I was doing a little wandering inside. What, are, what? You're wondering why I'm being so nice to you? Not. Well, I went into your ship to kill your companions. I killed Mash first, you know. You're gonna die soon, too. You guys are falling inside an endless hollow right now. The Imbecile Lord's thorax is infinite. You see, there's no destination here. No end point. Everything it swallows just keeps falling. Forever. And since it goes on infinitely, there is no entrance or exit. Once you've swallowed, it's over. It doesn't matter how strong or accomplished you might be, nothing can escape this hollow. Not unless you kill me. 
But nobody's going to wake up here. They're all dreaming of falling. If anyone did manage to wake up, they'd be able to see just like you can. Most of them will simply keep falling. Frankly, I think you would have been happier that way, too. Staying conscious here will just make the rest of your short life hell. Think about it. Even after you die, you're going to keep falling forever in this endless darkness. Isn't that horrifying? Yeah, that means you're stuck in this hell, too. True, it does, but now that the Abyssal Worm has manifested, there is no avoiding the world being destroyed. So in here, out there, doesn't matter to me. My life is already hell. Anywho, there's nothing you can do now. You can even perform simple summons in here. There's been nothing like this place in human history, so you won't find a single heroic spirit record here. So how can you summon something that doesn't exist? You'll either go mad from the endless falling, or eventually you'll close your eyes and slip back into the dream, into dreaming about falling. Well, you know, if we're talking about the void, <clears throat> Abby, oh, Abby, so which will it be? If you decide you'd rather sleep, just let me know. Of course, if you still want to save the world, you don't have any time left to think about it. Now that Britain Lost World is gone, we're back in the standard time stream. You said Caldea observed the planet disappearing in 24 hours, right? They were right. You haven't even got a minute to spare at this point. If you want to save the world, you'll have to fight me. If you fight me, I'll kill you. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a great way to die to me. And I couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, you actually tried to punch me. How'd you ever make it this far with a skull so thick? Hey, we punch a beast, you know. I think that we can punch a moss man like you. Oh well, if you're so eager to die, I'm happy to help you with that. I do enjoy watching people fight battles they haven't got a chance of winning. Oh, but I have a chance. Hmm? Where? Eh, well, yeah, we'll get help any moment now. Weren't you listening? I told you no one's coming to. We're just bystanders, right? Oh! We are just bystanders in her story! To me, Caster. A star has born. No. No, no, no. It can't be. Final Ascension time. I still prefer Second Ascension, to be honest. Even this, with this epic moment, I still prefer the Second Ascension. Cross space and time. I've heard the Foreign Mage's summons and come to his aid in accordance with our contract. If this battle is not to punish Britain, but to save the world, then I will cross even the ends of time to deliver this sword into his hands. Cross space and time to reach us. Question mark. In this quest, you'll form your party immediately before the battle begins. Would you like to start the quest? Yes. Uh, excuse me. Bell's toll. Heard the ringing of bell. Not the chorus of bell I had heard countless times before. If she wouldn't have sacrificed herself, she wouldn't have been able to summon herself here. Interesting. Now you get that thing are in her backstory. 9,000 IQs. For 10 D chess. What kind of familiar bell do you call to you that believed in you? This is the storm I was always running in. A maelstrom of wickedness. A crucible of hearts laid bare. A storm of dark, cold, ear splitting voices no different from a drainage ditch. No, no, no. Make it stop. Make it stop. I don't know how many times I thought I couldn't go on or wish that or wish for death to free me. The only reason I was able to keep running without losing my way was because of that light there. The pale blue light of a tiny far off star shining somewhere beyond the storm. <sighs> when I fell, I picked myself up even as I cried. When I exha was exhausted, I turned my head skyward. No matter where I looked, the star was always there, shining in the distance. A flicker of virtue among the sea of ice. A bright future awaiting me. There's no way that could possibly be true. No, even if it was, it doesn't matter. For you, that star is just a bright light. 
That was all it had to be for you. For that was all it had to be to become your goal. Knowing someone else was out there somewhere, looking at that same star was the only thing that gave you hope. It was the one thing that never changed, no matter how the storm raged. Right, that's right. That's all I had keeping me going. I was terrified of most things. Most things I didn't dare to trust, but that star's light always encouraged me. You and that star may not have had any connection. That star may have never pointed your way or come down from the heavens to help you, but yeah, I don't care about Bryn or about the future. But as long as that star is shining, I'll never give up. No matter how much the world shook from with storms or how much more time was spent suffering than at peace, that light has always watched over you, ever since you were a child. It's the one thing in the storm that always shone bright. You didn't do it for this society or for peace, or even for yourself. That star's light, little that little star's light never lost its brilliance. It's the one thing I don't want to betray. Huh. Well, that's all over now. Except the bells timbre. Finish your journey. Just like she could never be happy in that white castle, your life cannot continue beyond this point. Continue down this path and you, the one who changed the king's name, will disappear. You won't be needed anymore. Can you really do all of that just for one lone star? It's such a silly, trivial thing like not wanting to portray that beautiful star. Really worth going through with this? I hear voices crushing me for bringing about Britain's end. Voices who loathe me with for fulfilling my duty from paradise. Thousands, tens of thousands of voices decrying me. Millions of voices blaming me. This is vice. This fact is, there is no such thing as a star shining in a storm. That's why I can't save anyone besides myself. Not with a reason for that. Hmm? Who's there? Who's protecting me? You're not doing a very good job, but you're still stretching your hands out desperately trying to help me. Someone who lost their life because of your capricious whims. Someone who you've long since forgotten. Someone who... Someone from the fringes who's just like you. Her name is... If not having a name is a really terrible thing. In that case, what about this? I just came up with the idea now, but... Please use my name. Arctoria Castor. You can go by Artoria or Castor, or both if you prefer. She gave that fairy her name. I'm not gonna, like I'm gonna use it anymore anyway, so go on ahead and shout out to the world for all I care. Thank you, I promise I'll always treasure it. Not just this name, I'll always treasure your heart too. She named, she gave that fairy her name. I just saw the star briefly there. Her name was Hope. She had found that star's light right at the very end. So she gazed upon that star too. She had grown exhausted from always lifting everyone's spirits, but she never, she still never forgot to smile. So that fairy's original name was Hope. She's been protecting me all along, all because of that one impulsive act. So that star is Hope, the star of hope that has always that has always shown for Castoria, because she would eventually give her name to such fairy. Even now, she still believes in me, and all because of that silly, insignificant act. It wasn't anything special, or even noble. To any outside observer, it probably seemed absolutely silly, but... No, thank you for treasuring it. That's right, I don't have any amazing reasons, either. I'm no different from her at all. I have nothing to be proud of. No actual skills worthy of praise. I don't think I'll ever find a reason others would envy for as long as I live. But, even so... Who cares? This is all the reason I need. I just don't want to betray that star. I don't want to abandon these feelings. Silly and significant reasons like that. They've always been what we, and you, have to rely on to keep going. There's the star once more. The thing she's always been fighting for is hope. Even if you grin and have to bear it. Even if it's just for your own satisfaction. Even if you lack confidence and never figure out the answer. Even if there's a reason anyone else would think is silly, insignificant. It's the only thing I believe in. The only thing I can believe in. The only thing keeping me on going on even now. 
I'm on section 30, Deontay. Welcome, by the way. Farewell, young you. Now and forever. In time, the star beating within your chest and the timbers of the bells will resonate inside you. I have heard the foreign mage's summons, and come to his aid in accordance with the contract. If this battle is not to punish Britain, but to save the world, then I will cross even the ends of time to deliver this sword into his hands. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, I know I said this is what you should be doing, but did you seriously have to become a heroic spirit as, Av as an Avalon Le Fay? I can't believe it. Just how much of a knight are you? Still showing up now is a little pathetic, don't you think? I mean, you already had your dramatic exit. I don't know if that's your future form, or if you've somehow, or if you become some kind of special guardian. Britain's gone, though. You lost. Your part in this play is long since over. Performers like you who can't cut it the first time around have no business returning to the stage. That's true. There isn't anything here for me to protect anymore. Nonetheless, Fairy King Oberon, he who desired Britain's destruction. I agree that it is painful to witness the dead world being artificially kept alive. You are right to bring this one to an end. I know, right? But you are wrong to try and end others that had nothing to do with it. Even if these fairies were beyond salvation and our future was devoid of hope, that doesn't give you the right to rob others of their present when the future still lies ahead. That is an act of cowardice far more painful to witness than merely trying to escape destruction. Isn't that right, Oberon? Your actions have been dreadfully earnest, and quite frankly, pathetic. She told him off twice! Where am I? What have I been... Oh, this is a surprise. Mash! Yes, I was having a very strange dream. It's hard to describe, but it felt like it was falling endlessly. Senpai, Arturia. Oh, great. Now even Mash is awake. Must be Arturia's doing. Guess this means the ones in the command room will be waking up soon, too, then. Fantastic. Yeah. I have... I'm... I'm mainly reading and digesting right now, not really trying to provide my analysis on things, but there are definitely similarities. Mash, so we'll fill you in later. Right now we need your help. We're going to destroy the abyss wor abyssal worm here at its source before it can spread beyond Britain. Right, leave it to me. And you're still just as quick to change gears as ever. Well, whatever, it's fine. You Caldeans do so love defeating your enemies, so if that's how you want to play, I'm game. I was just getting tired of the chatter anyway. I've already told you about... What? Enough about what I am. If we're gonna play, this should be the grand finale. Shame nobody's around to watch it. And well, I'll just content myself with knowing it's a third-rate production no one would ever want to see anyway. Come on then, Sol, your prize summon should work fine now. Show me how proud you are to fight for humanity. Wanna ask you one last time? Hmm, what? Why? Why? To wipe everything clean, that's all. I was sure I already said as much. Humans and fairies alike disgusted me more than I can say. That's why I'm getting rid of it all, and I used all of you to do it. What, did you think this was supposed to be some kind of fun trip? If so, that's a damn tragedy. Everything I say is a lie. You shouldn't believe any of it. Peace in Britain? Artoria's mission. I didn't care about any of it. Sure you didn't, but even so... What about your own star? Tanya. That's exactly what I hate about you. Bringing you at the collapse, erasing the twilight. It's all just like a summer night's dream. My name is Oberon. Oberon Vortigern. I'm the death waiting in opposition to all of you. I'm a threat to all humanity. I'm not like the beasts. I don't love anything. I'll prove that to you in this battle. Now lift the curtain on this tragedy. This is when your beloved pilgrimage comes to an end. Okay, Oberon. So we have Mash and Artoria in our lineup here. I cannot move them around either. Okay, um... Is there seriously no advantage to be had? Okay. Well, there's no advantage. Then we go with our strongest. There is... I'm not getting any class-up things. Hang on. 
foreigners. Pretenders are reverse alter egos. Okay. Probably a good thing I just... <laughs> I mean, it's not showing there'd be any changes is the thing. Like, even hovering over Abby and Hocus and Oi here, it's not showing that they have advantage. But I believe I believe you guys. I believe you. Well, plus it does make sense that Abby would literally come to the void to save our asses. So let's get Abby to battle mode. And then Waver. Merlin. We are using pretty much the exact same setup as against Sir Nunnus here, funnily enough. Pretty much the exact same setup. Let's go with this. I want to be very careful of this fight, it doesn't need to be blitzed. It can be slow played. Well, I look, I'm gonna... I'm going to give it my best shot with this party here. This is just my first instinct party. We'll see if this turns out well. And while I'm fighting, I can eat more. I only had, was able to eat one slice of pizza during all that. Steep of chance. De remove a buff for a single enemy when attacking and decrease attack when removal is successful. Okay. Is he immune to stun? Interesting if that's the case. Okay. Slightly annoying. Very slightly annoying there. True, it does fit. I think Kam is immune to some enemy debuffs. Don't let me think he win. Increased damage against debuffed enemies. Mm. Also, I see the attack decrease. I'm suffering. Galahad designated. Hang on, what's this about Galahad designation? Okay, interesting. <clears throat> okay, um... I'm thinking here. 
think I do... The ten yeah, those debuffs are getting a little bit rough. Those debuffs are indeed getting rough. But we can hold out for a little longer. Yeah, the soundtrack is awesome here. Not yet. I was warned not to roll from until after this. So, yeah. Don't glitch out on me, game. Okay, I'm trying to think here. I think I might be able to break him. Oh, that's fine. I was going to be doing a brave chain anyways. I think I swap out Mash for Merlin. Swap out Mash for Merlin, use Merlin's buffs on Abby so that she smacks harder with her NP. Do the attack buff from Mystic Code. It will be Castoria, Abby, Abby. Yeah. I think that's the way to go. And we've got audio left. Love Well, I look forward to reading it. Uh, thank you, Moon Dragon, for the follow. It is really appreciated. Good job, Abby. True, I never got to see his NP. It's time to close the curtain with the tragic plate ends here. Lie like Vortigern. Evening Shroud, Morning Lark. The end of a rotten dream. Oh, devour the twilight. Lie like Vortigern. Oh, he has a buff removal on his NP? Okay. <laughs> and this just happened with his break. He has permanent ignore invincibility, ignore defense up, as well as increasing the strength of the end. Okay, that's so odd. I forgot to use this attack boost. Uh, okay. So I'm sleeping. That's a little annoying. Scales of enchantment. Of course he tries to put Abby to sleep even further. She will shortly here. Morning Lark. Oh no! Oh no!
The timing. Okay, um. Well, there goes Abby. As long as Castoria survives, I should be fine. There goes Mash. But I think we're gonna be fine. I think we're gonna be just fine. Because we've got the surprise you you in the back. It's you you coming in with the hammer. And the hammer is a lot of pain. True, it will be weaker. Still pretty decent, though. Will you stop a run? What is his deal? What is his deal? He can't be stunned. I didn't think he would do that, though. I legitimately did not think he would pull that shit. I was told he can't be stunned! By the power of my command spells... Finish this. And just for good measure. So if I I thought he couldn't I probably could have done it in one try too, but after Abby's thing failed, I asked, oh he can't be stunned, and I got confirmation that freaking Oberon has stun immunity. Uh You're good. You're good. あの、<笑><笑> <sighs> that was a fun fight, though. I will fully admit that was a fun fight. <laughs> that was a fun fight. That was an interesting fight. It would have definitely gone differently had I known he could actually be stunned, but it is what it is. Final arrow of section 30. Go. Lord Oberon, everyone, come quick. Lord Oberon has returned. Please, Lord Oberon, tell us all about the ones who want to kill us. I'm back, everyone. Did you all manage to survive this day again? Are you already burned to death? Gotcha. Well, that's okay. It was going to happen eventually. 
I'll just tell you about the outside some other time then. Honestly, I haven't got any new stories right now anyway. Oh, it's you. Sorry. No. Hiya! Seriously, just how shameless are you, you bastard? Oops, there I go again. No more foul language for me. What are you doing here, anyway? Did you fall asleep while we were fighting? Eh, it's fine. This is all just a dream, anyway. How about one last cup of tea before you go? I really haven't got anything left to say. I've already told you everything about my ghoul. What I'm really like and how things got to this point. So I don't, really don't see what reason you could have to stick around here anymore. Well, you still haven't told me how you really feel. Are you kidding me? You really are an idiot, aren't you? Even I'm not this bad. I've met insects, insects with better memories than you. Hey, you're the one who's called yourself a liar, right? Okay, you've got me there. Well played. You're right. I do feel strongly about some things. A lot of things, actually. Vortigern was Britain's destiny incarnate, and I was born as part of him. I'm not just Vortigern, though, you know? I'm Oberon, too. Did I ever tell you about what the land of the Fae really is? It's all a big, well, fairy tale. Single story, nothing more. 14,000 year old picture book Morgan wrote just to have somewhere to belong, if it, even if it had to be a fictional. And you people rejected it, just like you have all the others. You said it was wrong, that it was meaningless. I didn't like that, so much so that it even made me forget my disgust with everything. You make up characters who believe exa behave exactly how you want, put them in the kind of stories people dream about. Stories so good they even change your very lives. Then you just laugh and dismiss them as nothing more than flights of fancy. You're angry about stories, then. That's right. There's still meaning to be found, even in the most hackenite of kingdoms, or the most unsung side characters. All those stories you people from reality just forgot the moment you finished the last page. They had every bit as right, much a right to remain afterward as anything else. Oh well, there's no point in telling you this. You're human. You'll forget all about it once the next story comes along. Proper human history is all about growth and progress, right? Nothing permanent there. It all just keeps going. Forever. Okay, so I am reading the dialogue of Oberon, but I'm also reading the guys on the side. I feel like there was a trigger for this then, earlier on. There was a mention about, um... There was a discussion that we had with Oberon about the premise of fictional stories and the like. So maybe that's the trigger. Perhaps? I don't remember when exactly it was, but I do recall that there was some conversation you have with Oberon that goes into the realm of what fictional stories are about. So perhaps that is this thing's trigger. Me, I find all that stuff a huge pain in the ass. I was absolutely livid. That's why I wanted to end everything. There, happy? Now wake up already. You don't need a morning lark or even an evening one. Not yet, anyway. Alright, see you later, asshole of Caldea. This journey might have sucked, but at least it was full of surprises. Good luck with the next one. I'll pray for your success just as hard as I can. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'll come with you, I'll come with you. Goodbye, friend Oberon. Come visit Oberon's woods again sometime. So, Oberon is definitely a very interesting character. <sighs> I think I might... He might not be Obro-on anymore, but I do think that he still deserves to be rolled. Oberon Vortigern's fallen off the deck and is plummeting into the hollow. His spear core suffered serious damage. For Vortigern, the Abyssal Worm, the Sacred Sword is a double-edged blade, both sustenance and poison. You won't crawl back up here again, not with an injury like that. You will simply fall endlessly into a non-existent abyss. Falling down this hole forever. That sounds... This is how it should be. Aww. Oh, it seems I won't be able to bask in our victory. Is it already time for me to leave? Well, give my regards to your Merlin. It's only right since I came here without asking. You don't say. Let's walk here, then. 
No, I didn't walk here. I stepped through time and space all at once. This is the Storm Border Command Room. Do you read me, Soul? We don't know how it happened, but we can at least see what's happening. We just picked up a breakdown. No, a blockage in the conceptual space. The Abyss is starting to lose all connection to the outside world. We need to get out of here before it completely closes up, or we'll be stuck falling here forever. So I'm going to, I'm going to the point the storm border straight up and try to fly us out of here at full speed. Soul and Master, you both need to get inside the border right now. Did you hear that, Master? Um, what should we do? Please, do not worry about me. I've already said my goodbyes. The girl who traveled with you, Artoria Castor. She existed only in this lost belt, and will return to the planet's inner sea, along with the Shadow of Paradise. However, her actions and the answers she found have been inscribed upon me. I'm not King Arthur. I'm the concept of the Sacred Sword's wielder, the Knight of the Sacred Sword, given form. I only entrusted the Sacred Sword to those who use it, to those it has chosen. So consider this a special bonus. It was an important contract, after all, so I could not break it. She's got a little bit of Muramasa in there as well. So, Castoria from the Lost Belt is gone. But this, the Castoria inscribed that we can summon has her memory. So, she essentially did become a heroic spirit. Indeed. Just as you wish to help, so too did my other self. Now please hurry, you must not let yourselves be caught up in the Abyssal Worm's downfall. Farewell, soul, Mash. Tread onward without fear, for the light of the Stargazers of Chaldea shall always illuminate your path. Goodbye, precious friend of Britain. Goodbye, kindred spirit. Senpai, let's go. Right. So Castoria is gone. Inscribed as the, essentially the Lady of the Lake. Okay, Captain. Soul and Mash are back inside. Now punch it. All right. Activate all four Triton engines in parallel. Target speed ten thousand kilometers per hour. Set a course out of this hollow. Let's go. Professor, how long before the exit collapses? Will we make it at this speed? Okay, it looks like we have about five minutes before the abyss is completely sealed. Since the computer room has been shut down for 20 minutes, and assuming that the ship has been falling constantly during that period... Okay, quick and dirty calculations say we've fallen about 420 kilometers. So if we can push the border to Mach 8.5 and accounting for acceleration and deceleration, we should have no trouble getting out of time. Wait, I just realized something. There's no point in calculating the distance we've fallen. This hole is infinite. Now that we're inside, there is no entrance or exit. We can't possibly reach where we fell in, no matter how fast we fly. I see, then we'll just have to make our own exit. Captain, can the storm border cannons blast open the side of this hole? If we can't make it to an exit by flying upwards, our only choice is to break down this hollow's very concept. It'll be risky since there's no telling where we may emerge, but in five minutes' time, even that risk will be no longer be an option. I'm sorry, but after all that fighting, we just don't have the firepower for that. Keeping the ship flying is absolute best we can do. Even if we shut down one of the engines now, we wouldn't have nearly enough time to create a Spiriton warhead. Then you mean we can't leave, all because there's no exit? I'm afraid so, and once the hollow is completely blocked off, we won't be able to go anywhere. Once this hollow loses its connection to the outside world, it will even be even more inescapable than a black hole. A black hole may be a mass of gravity so dense that even light can't break free, but at least it still has an exit. Theoretically, one could still make their way out if they could achieve faster than light travel, but there simply is no means of escaping this hollow. It's an inescapable space that no man-made transportation technology can leave, regardless of how advanced. It truly is the epitome of a pitfall. Even as we are ascending, we continue to fall down towards the abyss. This is no time to be admiring it. God, isn't there anything we can do? It's not as though we're under attack or the ship's about to explode. I'll be damned if I'm going to admit defeat just because of a missing X. Hey look, an exit! These guys just picked up some kind of explosion 3,000 kilometers away. The hollow's been ripped open. I can see the outside again. That thermic ray has got to be Albion. Albion just fired off a mana burst. Melusine! I don't know why she did, but Albion just attacked the Abyssal Worm. Melusine saved us! 
Why did Melusine just save us? She falls to the ground, her strength exhausted. The sky of the end times looms overhead. Still yearning for the distant horizon, she continued to descend. Her intelligence and memories were gone. Everything that made her who she was had been shattered. All that remained now was the decaying corpse of a long dead dragon. A falling star with neither purpose nor desire, doomed to scatter upon in impact. Yet she still p felt pain in the hollow of her chest. There was still something she desperately needed to remember. Searching, searching, searching. Will do. In an instant, old sights flashed before her eyes and shattered forever. With each memory, ah, sparks flew from her cells. It was as though they were telling her what she is, what she used to be, and why she'd flown around this place for so long. Morgan, Bargust, Baobon. Coral, Woodwoes, Percy, and her first memory of Aurora, people that she held dear to her. Ah, there, she saw it. Fairy Britain's destroyer, the one who brought it to its conclusion. Britain's white dragon. Possessed of the same name as her, it was finality given form. Swelling up the entire world, those she loved called home. <sighs> she spread her broken wings and summoned her voice through her crushed throat. She's not red anymore, she's blue. But I did notice the Roman numerals initially. As well as the, Cal the shield of Chaldea, of Lord Chaldeas on her wing. Her scales peeled away as she flies. Her flesh began to slough off, unable to handle the strain of reactivation. She knew this, and she flew on anyway. Well, yes, because I very much want my own copy of Lord Chaldeas as a proper shield. That's right, I have to fly. I have to fly. Even if I never did anything honorable as a fairy. Even if I did never did anything noble as a knight. Even if I'm a freak of nature who's just imitating people all along. She wasn't she wasn't a British fairy. As a higher form of life, she was a perpetual outsider. Neither fairy nor human. Okay, so we did get that insight as well from uh Grimmer. Way, way back when she and him fought in Sheffield, that they were both outsiders. Her nameplate. Oh, the Tamlin Lancelot? How she's regained her sense of self? As the dragon who presides over the border, she was considered part of proper human history, even within a lost belt. As a life form from the outside, there had never been a place for her in this Britain. Oh! Tamlin Melusine! Okay. I'll never know the ground or peace. I'll never have what I truly want. All I have is this sight here, before me. The border that separates the earth from the heavens, and the stars from space. And yet she was still some there was still something she had gained. Something that, whether false or abandoned, she had found for herself. She could remember nothing now, but the fact alone that she, her memory circuits were blank proved that those memories once existed. This body's name. The name it was given here. The wind resistance whittled her body down. Every increase in speed chipped away at her dragon form a little more. If she kept going, she would soon self-destruct. The few moments she remaining to her had nearly passed. No Ebna would behave like this. No living thing would do something so paradoxical. The dragon understood it was acting radically. Yet, it persisted. Objective, stop anyone aiding Britain's destruction. Reason, unknown. The fire that shone in her eyes drove her to fly even faster. My name is Melusine. Tamlin Melusine. Now fly. Even if you are just an animated corpse, you still must fly. 
She tore through the air, soaring over the destruction below, and flying straight for her en enemy. And so the crumbling dragon, one of the beings who found salvation in this Britain, let out her final roar. She freaking is alive? How did she? That sound, vaguely irritating sound, jolted her to her senses. Several hours after the Tamlin ran her through, she slowly opened her eyes, still sprawled on her back. It's so quiet, the rites must have died down. <laughs> of course they have. They ride it for so long, they must have finally exhausted themselves. You see, I told you all we had to do was wait. Someone always takes care of my problems if I'm patient enough. It always has been that way for me. Why should this be any different? She coughed a few times, her throat oddly parched. Then she smiled a gentle smile and began an elegant speech, just as she had many times before. But there was one, no one to hear it. Everyone in her city was dead. All she received in response were visions of her past. Will do, Oberon. Ouroboros. Insect on the desk. You know what your one and only love is? Shining brighter than anyone else? You would never think to improve yourself. The very notion of growth and effort is alien to you. And why shouldn't they be? You've been perfect from the moment you came into existence. You don't have to work, like the Earth Clan. You don't have to suffer an injury, like the Fang Clan. You don't have to study, like the Wing Clan. You don't have to serve, like the Mirror Clan. No, the Wing Clan's value lies solely on existing in the first place. And you, Aurora, are the very avatar of that value. You don't love anyone, but you also don't want anyone. All you need is ornaments to further adorn yourself. What a wonderful way to live. I think it's fabulous. In fact, I really love it. But you're diminished whenever someone grows more popular than you. Of course, you would never get your hands dirty. You have all the people who adore you for that. Just like you did at Lindinium and with Ainsel. Whatever are you talking about, Oberon? They both deserved what happened to them. I was sad when I learned they were dead, but I suppose they must have done something to earn someone's ire. I see, how wonderful. I must have just imagined that you sent them to the Western Human Range, knowing Gawain had a visit planned just when they'd arrive. I must have dreamed that you were assigned one of your most fit capable fey horses to monitor them and report to you. Hm? Sure, I did know Gawain would be going there that day. But was it wrong to have her meet the child of prophecy? Not at all. You also helped me move my plans and cleared away a few actors on a stroke. Then I had better get going. Have fun scheming with Spriggan. Aw, oh, leaving so soon? Well, that's a shame. I thought you were going to tell me more fun stories today. You don't need me for that. You're already aware of almost everything that happens in Britain, right? Really, nobody can compare to the Wind Clan when it comes to espionage. Your wind tidings can manipulate information so easily, it's genuinely terrifying. Oh, but I will say this. Would you mind leaving Artorian's soul alone? I'm going to need both of them in order to defeat Morgan. Oh my, you're never so serious. It's almost enough to make me jealous of them. Oh, Ron, you told me your only goal was to remove Morgan from the throne. But can I really trust you? You're not just some nasty vermin that snuck into my Britain, are you? Of course not. Everything I do is for Britain's future. That's why I've been telling you all this. I truly believe you're the one best suited to rule it. That said, you probably shouldn't trust me too much. No, everything I say is a lie after all. Hmm? What do you mean by that? If everything you say is a lie, that would mean you're also lying when you say not to trust you. That's just the kind of heroic spirit I am. I'm not hiding the truth or spreading falsehoods. It's just that everything over on the Fairy King says becomes something that's n that was never worth believing. It doesn't matter if I speak the truth or not. Once I say it, it becomes a lie. You and I are opposites in that regard, Aurora. Everything you say becomes true. No matter what dark feelings you harbor or how falsely you present yourself. The moment you say something, everyone... Fairy, human, and even yourself takes it as the gospel of truth. <laughs> you're so silly, Oberon. I never know what it is you're talking about. Are you calling me a liar? As in, it takes a liar to know a liar? Not at all. You're not even aware you're lying, right? You're both an aggressor and an innocent bystander. That's how you survived this long. The very idea that you're Britain's most beautiful fairy is ridiculous. No, what you are is Britain's most innocent usurper. Usurper, yeah. He really was adorable. I should have caught and killed him when I had the chance. To be the most beautiful fairy in Britain. To be the fairy who shone brightest of all. That was her only purpose. She spent every minute of her 3,000 years being exactly that. 
For her, lying and scheming weren't crimes. They were just the cost of being her. She had no concept of evil, or of good. She only ever thought of ways to keep, think to keep shining. That said, there was one time. Just one time she did something that wasn't solely for her own benefit. It was in the Lake District during the Era of the High Queen 1600, when she went to inspect the Mirror Clan's town along with her ladies-in-waiting. There she found a strange creature in a dark bog. It was a writhing mass of flesh, a thing even fouler than its putrid surroundings. Oh my. It was all a calculated act, a way for her to show off to her servants. Just imagine it, Britain's most beautiful fairy helping Britain's most grotesque creature. A ploy is to spread the word about what a wonderful selfless fairy she must be to do such thing. My name is Aurora, what's yours? What she hadn't expected was for the mass of flesh she cradled in her arms to begin weeping like a person. She had never before seen tears so sad, so utterly genuine. Never before had she been so moved by her own actions rather than the envy she so enjoyed creating. Honestly, I never wanted to touch that thing. I want to be like you. That was what the mass of flesh had said before transforming into a beautiful fairy. Though Aurora's youth was eternal, she still suffered from decline. Her wings had continued to lose their luster ever since the air of the High Queen began, and her natural shine would look dim with a without a steady supply of new and unusual delights. And yet that girl... She was stronger than anything, more beautiful than anyone. She never declined, even in the smallest way. She didn't need to be innocent, so she would never realize what a monster she was. You see, there she is right now. A dragon fairy soaring nobly through the sky. How irritating, how contemptible, how revolting. Aurora was stuck on the ground covered in dirt and grime, while the dragon fairy shone more beautifully than anyone. Foolish girl, if you kill me... The dragon fairy would return to being nothing more than a mass of flesh. Aurora would never come to love the dragon. She was so sure and she would never return its affection. She wanted nothing more than for the dragon... The sufferer continually despondent at never hearing that simple sentiment of genuine affection she so craved. It was that longing, that despair, that made the dragon the fairy she was. That's why she ben why it benefited the dragon to continue protecting Aurora, the source of her suffering. But it hadn't been her own benefit that the dragon killed Aurora. It had been for Aurora's. Yes, that's right, I'm not afraid to die. What I fear is losing my radiance, having my colors fade and no longer being special. That's why... Even though the dragon knew that doing so would turn her back into the hideous mess of flesh she used to be, she still chose to kill her. Aurora the miracle that saved her, and the one she loved more than anything else in the world. What an utterly loathsome creature. Fine, I'm glad to be finally free of it. You see, Oberon, any see like that is a stuff of true innocence. Yeah, you can see her breaking apart. She only cradled the mass of flesh to show off what a good person she was. It reflected her inner ugliness as clear as a lake. Go away. Go away. But the creature born from that hideous mass was truly beautiful. Aurora realized she had done something good for the first time in her life, and smiled. Higher, higher. As high as you can possibly can. And still so gazing upward with childlike innocence at the dragon corpse scattered like dust in the wind. Aurora faded away, and her radiance finally faded. I still think she should have suffered... Her worst fear, though. There's the exit. Y yes, I see it too. But why in the world did Albion do that? We can worry about that later. Da Vinci, what's our distance to the target? We're 800 kilometers away from the right rift. It's farther than it looks, but we can totally make it, Captain. Everyone, hold on to whatever you can. When you're maximum power. Forget all the safeties and just get us out of here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, Captain, full speed ahead. You know, it just occurred to me, it, they could have also solved the solution by bringing Musashi back as well. So thank goodness they did not do that. I'll punch it all the way to the sun if I have to.
Oberon was falling. He kept falling down the bottomless void, along an endless shaft. He had no strength left to fly. No, actually. The wings on my back are just for show. I could never fly, stupid. He smiled a hateful smile. He was truly enjoying himself. He may have been defeated, but he'd still accomplished his goal. His only regret was that he hadn't been able to take Caldea down with him. Go on, get out of here. It'll be a relief not to have to see our damn faces anymore. Further, further. The foreign mage, the other child of prophecy. The companions he'd spent his long journey with flew further into the distant sky. Then after Oberon the Lyre had hatefully seen them off. Oh well, who cares? What matters is that I killed Britain just like I wanted. Although, I'm sorry, Titania, my fictional queen who loved me in all my twisted ways. I'm sorry I couldn't get rid of those proper human history bastards for you. Tanya, one who was created for a single purpose, then discarded the moment it had been served. The sacrificial love of his life who would only exist within a story. Maybe he had already met someone similar to her. But even if he had, Oberon the Liar would never be able to believe it. You know, it's weird. Even though I got the ever-loving shit kicked out of me, I still feel strangely at peace. Cole and the Abyss disappeared as he continued his endless fall. There. Hm. So that's proper human history sky, huh? Damn it, it's so beautiful it makes me sick. The infinite hollow sealed itself as the abyssal worm fell on, a destination forever beyond his reach. Farewell, Oberon. One quartz, five scales, five prisms, and five hellfires. The curtain falls. I'm guessing this is the end. So, we're gonna keep going for the final part of Avalon Le Fay. Yeah. He's jealous of reality. Of that he of the fact that he is just a story and he feels he's going to be discarded, forgotten. I think that is the crux of Oberon's hatred. He hates how stories are discarded, how we can read a story, put it down, and forget about it later. That is what Oberon dislikes about basic humanity. Why he sought to destroy them all. Because, perhaps because, you know, He means the Lost Belts. I mean, I can see it. I can see how it will probably... What? The Lost Belts will probably write a long report on them. We'll probably get killed for our part in it. You know, because we're too dangerous to let live or something. And they'll just be files on a shelf somewhere. For curious people to read at some point. All of our adventures. All of these other worlds. Project Mirror World Service in Santa Space in 50... 40, 30, 20. Shut off Triton engines 2 through 4. Get us back to normal speed. Here it comes, everyone. Brace for impact. We're about to reach the British Lost Belts. No. Regular British airspace. Not necessarily. Again, this is all very much headcanon theory. Like, this is a com full theory from, from me, but I'm definitely theorizing that Caldea will turn into the proper Throne of Heroes. Because the Throne of Heroes exists outside of time and space, you know? It's a gathering place where all the heroes are. I just feel like that could be the direction for the end of Fate Grand Order. Is it becoming the Throne of Heroes? Caldea. Becoming the Throne. Senpai, look out the window. Come on, Ash. Let's go. Attention all staff. The Storm Border has successfully returned to British airspace. We are standing down from high alert. Please return all weaponry to the army, armory, and assume your standard duties. First, I'm told Commander Gordolf would like to say a few words. The floor is yours, Commander. R right, first off, I want to congratulate you all on completing this extraordinary long mission. The field team did exemplary work in investigating this mysterious land, enlisting the help from the local populace and preventing the world's collapse. 
As and for 50 days, our staff remained vigilantly on standby in almost total darkness, all while keeping the border ship shape. Thanks to all of your efforts, Sheba is now back within normal parameters. This, of course, means the collapse that was predicted to spread for Britain and the rest of the world has been completely averted. So I am proud to announce that as of this moment, our operation in the British Lost Belt is concluded. Congratulations! Hip hip! Hooray! Is that what you got, Chubby? You really ought to brush up on your vocabulary. I was just saying what I felt. If you think you can do better, you try giving him a speech next time. <clears throat> you know how it was to be cool? Collected an elephant with a spotlight on you? The answer is pretty damn. <laughs> Good feature. Greek Da Vinci, could you give me the mic again? Next, I have some more mundane news. We're currently flying at low speed so we can run diagnostic on all our systems. I put an air net around the deck, so for the next 20 minutes, those who wish to go out there may do so. Take a look. It might not be easy, but it's still important. Go make one last memory of Britain before we leave it behind. Are we going to see Melusine? Flying about. True, the, the sky in the Fairy Britain was always sort of twilight, wasn't it? Oh, mash. Although this is. Although this Britain. Fairy Britain is now gone. Hey, Lucarlo, just at the very end of this of the story portion of the stream, and then we'll be moving into the roles. Yeah, that's what happens when a singularity is repaired. Still existed, just like the other Lost Belts. A beautiful sky unlike the sky of Britain. Right. I learned so many valuable things on this journey. I'll treasure the memories forever. Hey, Soul. Mash. Da Vinci, did you come... Did you take one last look at Britain too? Sure did. After all the time I spent traveling around it, I figured I should say a final goodbye. Plus, I wanted to toast Mike with this wine I got from Baker. So long, Mike. I bet you're doing great things with your pup right now. In fact, I know you are. Even if you're from a different world that's been restored and pruned away. Even if it's no longer possible to observe it now that this universe has deemed it unnecessary. The planet still remembers everything that once existed on it. One of these days, I'm going to cross that border so I can pay you a visit and see how far you've come. That's a great idea of Da Vinci. That's where part three will take us across the multiverse. Screw the pruning theoretical phenomena. We'll go into the other universes all on our own. In actuality, I really... In some ways, I like the pruning theoretical phenomena, but I also don't like it. I like it because it helps to, you know, sort of narrow the focus down of things. But I don't like it because it sort of cuts off the whole multiversal angle of things, you know? So I do like and dislike the pruning theoretical phenomena. Alright, that's not the only reason I came here. You guys gotta come with me to my workshop, now. The spirit origin graph just started glowing out of nowhere, and I also heard what sounds like meowing. Help me check the summoner, will you? There's no telling what might pop out of it. I see, leave it to me. I can handle whatever it throws at us. After all the pops I got in Fairy Britain, I'm basically Super Kyra right now. About that, Mash. Yes, what is it, Master? Oh no! Your spirit orb uh, or I'll put back to normal. That's okay. I knew that. I'll just save my disappointment for later. Oh no! Anyway, never mind that now. We still have to go to Da Vinci's workshop. I'm not sure why, but I'm really excited about this. I think we're about to meet someone wonderful. You sure about that? Well, okay. I guess I can trust Super Kyrolite's intuition. Okay, Britain, this is it. Thanks for introducing us to so many great people. Now, come on, Sol. We've still got a long way to go. It's time we stopped reminiscing and went back to our home. Goodbye, Britain. No, this is kind of exciting. I wonder what sorts of heroic spirits we're about to meet. Lanterns of Chaldea. Majestius 2. Catastrophe defragmentation. Halted. Transitioning to catastrophe automation. Great work on discovering and repairing the unexpected dead end. 
I really have to hand it to Caldea. It only took them 23 hours and 58 minutes to prevent the collapse. But there's no time to celebrate. I need to get ready for the next dead end point. Let me see. It looks like the other potential nasty incidents ahead are... The immature beast that flew off from Britain in what could end up being a single largest singularity to date. As for Caddick's recovery, it doesn't seem there's any way to remove his serious life, so we'll just have to give up on that. And so the hieroglyphic prediction is not a problem. Revolt, eyelid, eyelid. Don't get it. In Arabic, please. Oh well, I'll just ignore it for now. More importantly, I think it's time to focus on the big gal herself. I wonder what she's doing next. So that's what our future has in store. Can't say it's unexpected, but it doesn't leave us much time. I'd better hurry and make our preparations. Chaldea has conquered six Lost Belts, and the Foreign God has surely finished her studies by this point. So now we each only have a single target left. This will no doubt be our last victory without any casualties. There's simply no way we can only get out unscathed for what's to come next, is there? Oh, Sion, don't say such ominous lines. Do not say such ominous lines, Sion. Cosmos Denial. And what a long Cosmos Denial this one was. This has got to be the longest of any story portion of FGO just yet. Hold all. Hold all thoughts. Super Kyra Light indeed. Mash is Bond 8. Why not Bond 10? Capable, but also capable of getting to 90. Yes. Definitely going to be doing that right away. After I sign this portion of the video for YouTube off. Uh, what were you saying to what Ouroboros Oberon asked about Melusine Oberon? I don't remember. The class skill Fey Eyes A and the Fey attribute have been added for Artoria Caster. The name of Artoria Caster's unique sword selection has been changed to Sacred so Sword Sacred Sword Creation. The effects have not been changed. Okay. Good gracious. The name of Artoria Caster and Morgan's unique skill Protection of the Lake has been changed to Avalon Le Fey. The name of Oberon's skill question mark question mark question mark has been changed to Anti Humanity D. The profile of Artoria Caster has been updated. I'll check it out later. Craft Essence Glowchester in 2020 has been sent to your present box. Habitrot has been sent to your present box. Lost about number seven. There's a bead of light there, but I want to see. Before I fully sign off on this for the YouTube portion of things, I'm curious as to, first off, what the... Okay, it is in its intact state that the free quest will take part in. Intact. And we still have all the notes. That's cool. I'm glad that they didn't take the notes away. And then we will claim, first off, Habitrot. So, this is Caldea. I heard it was a mage's workshop, so I was imagining it to be something like a scary cave. But it's clean, fancy even. I can see myself sticking around here for a while. Oh, my name's Habitrot. I'm a fairy, friend to brides everywhere, expert tailor, and bringer of happy endings. Well, that's who I am, but I feel like my noble phantasm is a bit off. Do you guys know why that is? Oh, she's been influenced by, um... She's been influenced by... Aval by the Lost Belt, hasn't she? Alright, so... What is her own old phantasm exactly? Increase MP strength... For yourself... Deal damage to all enemies, gain crit stars, decrease your own star, gather rate. Spinster Habitrot, anti-army. Her NP is the Black Barrel. Interesting. And we get some coins for her. We'll go ahead and claim Glowchester 2020. Um, 
I'm gonna allow it. For some reason, Mordred, your, your message was held for race, ethnicity, or religion reasons. So, Glowchester in 2020. So, Gareth, Castoria, and Nock. We'll lock that in. Gain 10 crit stars for one time, increase arts by 3, and peace by 5. If only she had never seen the future. If only she had never inherited the High Queen's duty. If only Paradise had given her a different mission. Um, no, it's shoot the black. That was, um, blocked. That is what was blocked. And if only the fairy Britain she had imagined in her dreams had continued. Surely many fairies would have come to visit the dazzling fortress. It would have been filled with blinding sunlight and laughter of good friends. There would have been many happy memory, happy lives crossing paths on the street. She wouldn't wait. She wouldn't be wearing anything fancy, but she would have worn a familiar silver star-shaped hairpin. That is what her spring memories might have been like. But even if that future neighbor came to pass, surely there would have been days like this. Castoria with her friends. Aww. Castoria. Castoria's profile is totally new. Well, I will definitely check that out when I get to the rule portion of things. Right now, I'm going to pause the recording here for YouTube, and I need to go and get me a drink, because I've gone through two whole bottles of water in this five and a half hour stream. So yeah, I need to go and get me a new water, so I'm going to sign off here for the YouTube portion of things, and then run an ad here on Twitch. So, for the user uh, watching this on YouTube, I do hope that you enjoyed this various Avalon Lafay. I've been posting it day by day ever since the Monday after I finished it, so it's probably like mid-August at this point. But I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did, be sure to tune in. I will always post more Fate Grand Order content pretty much weekly, and story segments will always be divided into different sections for more ease of consumption, though Section 29 is going to be a monster. Four hours. That's going to be something. But once again, thank you all so much for coming out. If you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time, everybody there.